ladies and gentlemen. If you're just starting your healing journey in World of Warcraft or you want to try this new role, there are a few things that you can do to make your journey much more pleasant and easier. In this video, I'm going to give you the basic tips and advice to get you started on your journey. The first thing that you need to do is get a healing add-on to help you with your party frames. The default Blizzard UI is good when it comes to visuals, but it's horrible when it comes to tracking your own spells, buffs and especially dispel debuffs. So getting a healing party frames add-on is the best favor that you can do to yourself at the start of your journey. There are a lot of options out there and basically they all do the same things. You can customize the look and feel, the size, the positioning. So from that perspective, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. It could be Grit, Healbot, Voodoo or Cell. They all allow enough customization and display options to fulfill your healing needs. Personally, I started using Cell and I love it. If you want, you can watch a guide that I created for it from the description of this video or the cards above. But even if you select one of the others, they're popular enough that you'll be able to find more than enough information online on how to use them and set them up. The next most important thing is to arrange everything on the screen so it's easily accessible and close to where you're looking. By default, the party frames are at the edge of the screen, but instead you want to move them close to the middle because you'll be clicking on them constantly, so you want to minimize your mouse movement and you want to keep them close enough so you can easily spot them changing when people take damage. You will notice that some people use horizontal bars, others use vertical, and that's actually a personal preference. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you put them in an easily accessible place where you can see them. You also want to position all of your weak cores that you might be using and the important buttons and cooldowns close to the middle of the screen as well for that same reason. And then try to get rid of everything else so you're not distracted while you're healing in a dungeon or a raid. Even if you want to keep something like details damage meters, you should be able to put them at the edge of the screen now because that area is empty and it's far from where you need to be looking in order to heal. One last piece of advice here, make the UI work for you. Don't mind other people telling you, oh, this is something that you must do or UI is very bad. You can, of course, keep revising and optimizing it, but as long as you can make it work for you, it doesn't matter what everyone else tells you. Probably the most important tip for healers is to bind your healing spells either to your mouse buttons or mouse over healing macros so you can heal people by just hovering over their party frames and not targeting them directly. This is extremely important as it's going to save you a lot of time and extra clicks. And if you haven't done this before, just try it out and you're gonna see how much better it is. There's a lot of ways to achieve that. Right now, the default Blizzard UI provides capabilities for click casting bindings. You can use that by all means, or you can download the click a add-on, which allows you to do those same things, but it has some enhanced capabilities that the Blizzard UI is not capable of, like binding stuff to scrolling your mouse wheel up and down. However, if you downloaded one of the add-ons that I suggested in the first section of this video, most of them actually have the click casting capabilities embedded inside the add-on itself, so you can use them straight from there as I'm doing with the cell add-on. And last but not least, some of the classes actually have a lot of buttons that you need to press and a lot of key bindings that you need to have available. So if you're wondering how to manage all of this, I have a video talking about that. You can watch it, link in the description of this video or the cards above. Right now, there are 7 healing specs in World of Warcraft and in order for you to enjoy your healing journey, you need to select the right one. If you pick something that you're not enjoying and you don't vibe with the class, you're not going to enjoy what you're doing and you're not going to enjoy healing in general. The answer to the question which one is the right class then is entirely up to you. I would even encourage you to try different specs if you have the option to do so and I can still give you a few tips to help you with your choice. The most important one is don't look into tier lists and don't look into meta classes. Tier lists are subjective and meta is only relevant to pushing world first keys. 
Something tells me that if you're watching this video, you're not ready to push world first keys yet, and once you get there, you have plenty of time to change and pick up the meta class. Up until then, and in every kind of other content, you can make every healer work. The tuning doesn't matter, the power doesn't matter, the meta doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you having fun and learning, so pick a class that you enjoy while you're doing that. If it happens so that you don't have a favorite, you can use several different other criteria to help you pick. Some of the healers are melee, some are ranged, so if you have a preference there, you can use that as a starting point. The amount of buttons and key bindings that you need for every single different healer are also different. Some have more than others, so you can pick a class with less buttons to press if you don't want to get overwhelmed at the beginning. You can also rank the healers by difficulty, although that's subjective as well. And to help you judge the difficulty correctly, you can consider whether the healer is reactive or proactive. Proactive healers need to prepare before the damage happens with different casts and ramps, which requires a bit more skill and knowledge, while reactive healers wait for the damage to happen and then they start healing post factum. Currently, almost every healer has a little bit of both play styles, but some of them lean heavily towards one side of the spectrum, so you can use that as a picking point as well. Last but not least, few more general tips. First, you need to keep learning, it's gonna be a process, it's not gonna happen instantly. And at the beginning, I'm going to recommend watch as many YouTube videos and guides that you can find to get the basics down, but then start playing as much as you can because the best teacher is practice and you're only going to learn and become better by playing and not by watching videos. The other very important tip here is don't worry about damage as healer ever. It doesn't matter. This is one of those things that matters only in world first keys. Everywhere else, I'd rather have you do zero damage but manage to heal the whole dungeon or raid, so make sure you don't have damage meters and if you have to even remove your damaging spells from your bars. At some point you're going to learn enough so you can actually start worrying about that, but until then healing is the only thing that matters. And last but not least, as I said the most important part is to have fun. That includes not blaming yourself every time you wipe or somebody dies. This is always going to keep happening, sometimes it might be your fault, sometimes it may not. But feeling sorry or blaming people is not going to help. Instead, use it as a learning experience, no matter whose fault it is, and just move on to become a better player. So, those are my top tips for the beginning of your healing journey. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Now get out of here.